Okay, everyone, for this next video that we're going to do, we are going to do a guide for a two sample hypothesis test. Let's go ahead and read our scenario. So here it says that Ranger Gord is trying to figure out if he wants to go to the Bighorns or the Snowies to hunt mule deer next season. He suspects that the proportion of hunters who see a four point buck or better is lower in the Bighorns than in the Snowies. If he can find significant results at the alpha level of 0.05, he will go to the range where more four-point bucks were seen. Otherwise, he will go to the bighorns as they are closer to his home. Ranger Gord somehow convinced Game and Fish to give him a list of hunters from the previous season. From this, he randomly selected hunters. Okay, everyone, for our next guide, we are going to do a two-sample hypothesis test. Now, let's go ahead and read our scenario to figure out what we should be doing. So here we go. Ranger Gord is trying to figure out if he wants to go to the Bighorns or the Snowies to hunt mule deer next season. He suspects that the proportion of hunters who see a four point buck or better is lower in the Bighorns than in the Snowies. If he can find significant results at the alpha level of 0.05, he will go to the range where more four point bucks are, uh, were seen. Otherwise, he will go to the Bighorns as they are closer to home. Ranger Gord somehow convinced Game and Fish to give him a list of hunters from the previous season. From this he randomly selected hunters who were either in the Snowies or the Bighorns and asked them if during their hunt they saw a four point buck or better. The data that he collected is provided below. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on our data. Let's get it copied and let's put it into our R Commander. Okay, so now let's go and ask our question. So preliminary questions, what type of data are we dealing with? So let's just go ahead and open up our data. And we see that we've got categorical for our groups and categorical for our data of interest or the, the true proportion who saw a four point buck or better. Okay, so because of that, we know that we are dealing with what we're actually interested in is the categorical data. The method that we should be using for a test statistic is getting it's a one sample for a difference in proportions. Now there's actually multiple ways that we can get a test statistic. There's actually two that are okay. Uh, we could either go down the path for a z-test or we can go down the path for chi-squared. So I'm going to click on chi-squared because it's what our commander just naturally does. Uh, and so we can, we can use that method. Okay, so the population of interest is, it's not everyone in Wyoming. It's not hunters in Casper. It's not even hunters in Wyoming. It's hunters who went to the Bighorns or the Snowies. Okay, so the grouping variable that we're interested in is the mountain ranges. Which mountain range did they actually go to? And a response variable is these, did you see a four point buck or better? So the parameter that we're comparing between the two is the true proportion who saw a four point buck. Okay, and now is our sample size sufficiently large to do our analysis? Okay, so there's a couple ways that we can go through and look at this. Um, and, but the simplest way that we can do this is just going to go to statistics and we're just going to run our little proportions tests because we know what we're going to do. So if we do this two sample for the group, we're going to choose our mountain range. We're going to choose the four point buck scene and for our options. Okay, now we need to know what we're going to run. So we're actually going to jump down. We're going to cheat just a second. Uh, let's run, let's set up our hypotheses real quick. So because we're dealing with categorical data, we're going to be dealing with this pi, pi one minus pi two. And the baseline assumption is that they are the same. So we're going to put zeros in. And remember the null hypothesis is always an equal sign. Now we've got to figure out is this less than, greater than, or not equals to. Uh, and if we go back up to our scenario, it says that uh, he suspects that the proportion of hunters who see a four point buck or better is lower in the bighorns than in the snowies. Okay, so we need to know which one is group one and group two. So group one is the bighorns, group two is the snowies. And so we're going to think that that oop, is going to be less than zero because the first proportion is going to be smaller than the second proportion, which will give us a negative number in our difference. Okay, so because of that, we can now say that we're going to do less than, and we need to know our confidence level. Let's go and check our confidence level, still 0.05. Now look at this nice thing up here. It says difference, bighorns minus snowies. So we know that, that we are doing the, the correct um, comparison. So let's go ahead and click OK. And before we look at our output, let's go and look at the total number, the proportions of yeses and the proportions of noes. Okay, so the nice thing that it gives us real quick is it gives us, these are the percentages 
and we know how many um, how many we see in each of these so we can see that okay uh, we can do a quick check to see the actual count uh, so if we wanted to do the actual count, we know that there are 181 in the bighorns, and we just need to take the smallest proportion here to see uh, if they are, um, if there are, if, if we had a big enough sample size. So we want to do this 181. I'm just going to copy that and take it to the bottom. 181, and I'm going to multiply it by the proportion that we've got, and the proportion that we had was. Uh, 36.365, so multiply by 0.365, and that gives me 66, roughly, as the number of yeses, and then the number of noes would be much bigger than that, because it'd be 63% of that 181. So the next one that we need to do is we need to check the smallest value, this 20% of 86. So let's do this, 86 multiplied by 0.20, Oops, it's not a point. Point two oh nine, and that gives us like seventeen or eighteen. So remember, when we are doing our two sample proportions testing, we need at least fifteen yeses and at least fifteen noes in each group, and we just showed that we did. And so if we actually come here and look, we can see that yes, we had like sixty-six yeses in the big horns, one hundred and fifteen noes. In the big horns, 68 yeses in the snowies, 18 noes, so all are at least 15, so we are good to go. All right, so now let's go down to our actual analysis. Uh, alpha level, what did we set it at? It was this 0.05. Let's go set our alpha level at 0 0.05. And we need to look at our sample statistics. All right, so our sample statistics that we could grab, we could grab like X bar, but we actually want P1 because it's going to be our first proportion and our second proportion. And if we look at the output from our hypothesis testing, nice thing is, is that it actually gives it to us, which is super handy. We can grab, this is our sample estimate for our first proportion. This is our sample estimate for our second proportion. Now, one thing that we want to check and make sure is that we are actually testing the yeses and not testing the noes. All right, so how do we check that? Well, if we go up here and we look at our percentage table, it is whatever is the first thing is going to be what we are actually testing. So we are testing the yeses. Had the noes been in front, we would be testing the noes, but we are testing, in fact, the, the yes proportions. And that should match up because our proportion here is 0.365 if we round, and it said that the proportion of yeses was 0.3, or it was 36.5. So we know that we're doing the, the correct proportions. Okay, our test statistic. Once again, there's a couple ways that we can do it. I'm going to use chi-squared because it's what it, our commander just naturally provides us. So we've got this chi-squared of our 42.32. Now, one thing that we actually probably are going to have a problem with is we probably don't have enough decimal places for us to actually pick it up because typically we respond with our decimals to four decimal places. So what we can do is we can do our options digits and I'm just going to say equals 12. That's probably way too many. Um, but I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to go ahead and just run uh, this test again. I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And now look how many more decimal places that I get. And that was just from this simple option digits equals 12. OK, so I'm going to highlight my chi squared value and I'm going to dump that in. And I'm going to get my p value. And if you notice, my p-value is really, really small. So I'm just going to say that this is 0 0.0000, just to four decimal places. Because this is scientific notation, e negative 11. We've got like 10 zeros before we even hit a value. So it were really, really small. So our p-value is going to be less than alpha. And for a confidence interval, oops, let's see if I can open this up a little bit. Okay, my confidence interval, it even gives it to us here as well. So when we're dealing with proportions, remember, um, we can only be to, they're between zero and one. And so since we're doing a one-tailed confidence interval, it actually even gives us the correct guy. So we're gonna paste that guy in there. And we're gonna paste this guy in here. Okay, and so we are going to reject the null hypothesis. So one way that you know that is because the p-value is less than alpha. 
The other way is if when we're doing the comparison between uh, two groups, if we get negative negative or positive positive, uh, we know that we have shown that zero is no longer in our interval, and so we found some significant difference. However, if there had not been zero in there, if it had been negative and positive, uh, then we would say that you know zero is inside our interval, and we couldn't show that it was different. But here we were able to reject the null. Right, so our conclusion then is going to be this guy right here, that Ranger Gord has collected sufficient evidence. So we've got our chi-squared. This one is the degrees of freedom here, one, and then this 133 is our sample size. Uh, and I think it gives us our 133 somewhere. Let's see. I'll have to check where this 133 is coming from. Anyhow. Uh, we've got our chi-squared value, and we've got a p-value that it is essentially zero, an alpha level 0.05. And so we're going to reject the claim that the true proportion who saw a four-point buck. Uh, if bighorns is equivalent to that of the snowies, and instead conclude that the true proportion who saw four-point buck of the bighorns is significantly less than the snowies. So Ranger Gord is 95% confident that the true proportion who saw four-point buck of the bighorns is somewhere between... Um, point, uh, we'll say point three three two nine to one less than that of the snowy. So based on the evidence, he decides to go to the snowies, and then we can just go ahead and submit, and we're actually able to oops to grab all of these. Let's see, show an answer. So it looks like that I've got a slight error in here. I will go back and fix that and um, and get that. Uh, so it looks like I've got a couple of small things. Oh, and I didn't select an answer on this guy. Should be pi. There we go. Looks like I've got a couple of small errors in here that I will fix up, and I'll post a new video of when I get those done. But the the general scenario is done correctly. So. Anyhow, I will go through and make sure that I get those fixed, um, but this should be able to get you through getting through your guide um, later today. So anyways, have a good one. Hope that helps you out.